Okay, so second video. This one has both star in it at its end and uh, Solaris as well. So with star, really, if you just went in and had a fixed sum mindset and you started to talk about artistic control, you would have some real problems. So in that case, you had to take a cooperative approach, but without revealing your BATNA, most of the time you wanna, don't want to do that unless um, you are reaching a stalemate, in which case you could disclose your BATNAs just as a way to try to find a ZOPA. So, and you don't really want to cooperate either, but you want to start disclosing your interests and priorities and try to build trust and then ask for the other party's interests and priorities. And as we talked about with New Recruit, if somebody else won't open up to you, you can give information about your interests and priorities and that's not going to hurt you. So I'm going to show you in one final video because it's a spreadsheet and it's just easier. I'm going to show you some information about STAR that you can take a look at. But the whole goal there was to inject the new issue around differences in expectations of the future. And that is specifically how many albums each company was going to make. Pacific would make one. Heffin was going to make two. So the only way to do it was to give artistic control initially to Pacific to make the only record it was going to make, and then to relinquish the all four stars to be together under Heaven's label. So it got artistic control on its second uh, record or uh, record, the only one that it could, or the second of which it would have expected to make. And by the way, when we'll talk more about the Zopas, there was no overlap or Zopa when you thought about trying to get Sta with R Robin with heaven, but you could relinquish Robin to, to Pacific. And I'll show you that detail on the next video. Now, in terms of Solaris, so remember, you're trying to make the pie as big as possible first, but then you go into the classic distributive tactics. Now, Solaris was only about price. You really weren't allowed to go beyond that per the requirements of the role play. So then it's really just a matter of claiming value within the Zopa. So you're really dealing with all of kind of the classic stuff that you've been learning about in Appleton Baker, New Recruit. So think BATNA, targets, resistance points, anchoring, all that stuff. And then now we want to think more about substantiation and objective valuation. So objective valuation essentially means that as best you can, you find, quote, hard data or things that are indisputable points of evidence on the value of something at hand. So if you were to look at, say, a car, Kelly Blue Book is typically the standard objective criterion um, that you would use to evaluate a car. And most people think that's objective. What we'll talk about is the fact that very often valuation is considered subjective. And that would be because the buyers will try to find values or um, evidence that supports a low price and sellers a high price. Um, so think about like a classic home sale, the, the sellers are going to choose comps in the area that sold very high and anchor, try to make comparisons between their home and those that hold, uh, sold at a high price, whereas the buyers are going to look at the things in the area that sold at a lower price and try to make those the comparables. So it really does get to be a matter of persuasion and your ability to, quote, substantiate. So substantiate means you put down an argument for the valuation that you think something's worth. And in the claiming value stage, again, you're better off anchoring as long as you know the value of the item at hand. Okay, so if we talk about Solaris specifically, we could ask what's Sherman going to do if it can't acquire Solaris today? Well, we know from the Sherman side that Sherman will have to build a receiver business of its own, and it's going to cost 500 million euros. On the flip side, um, Solaris is going to have to sell its assets if it's not bought, and that would give Solaris $120 million. So if you think about the Zopa, then Solaris, it's going to be between, whoops, I'm sorry, there's a, um, Oh, I did get that right. The Zopa is 120 million to 500 million. So the Zopa is pretty wide, which is why you can get a pretty wide range consistent with Appleton Baker of outcomes. The average outcome or the usual outcomes is somewhere between about 150 to 250 million. But I've seen people negotiate 
um, as high as like 450 million and as low as around that 120 million, depending on how they go about things. Now, in the negotiation analysis um, article, it did mention at the very end it, um, fairness, for example, and ethics. And you have to decide as a negotiator what you think is fair, because it may well be that you could get a really great price, but you may feel that that really is not consistent with your values and you'd rather see more value brought in, in bo from both sides. So a lot of negotiation is really figuring out your style, who you want to be, considerations of fairness, what you think is the ethical thing to do, and then act accordingly and know the um, upsides and downsides of your natural style. Okay, so one of the things is how did you set targets? And um, so we could say, okay, well, targets typically are based on objective standards. Now, the sellers would make an argument um, that would invoke the bio plus increase in shares. So of an additional 40% for 100 million in order to uh, justify an objective sales price of 250 million pounds. And the way you do that is divide the $100 million of extra infused cash by the 40% of the business that they gained by buying in with those shares. So that would be one way to do it, would be at a $250 million valuation. The buyers can argue that the failed attempt to raise capital means that the company is objectively worth less than $80 million. Um, so you can see here that there's just a revolving door in the standards that people use. And once again, part of this is who is persuasive, who anchored first, who is persuasive and kind of stood by their logic. So some students advocate that objective standards will estimate the future profits of Solaris and set their profit uh, or the target based on the net present value calculation. So looking at a future income stream or um, profit stream and then discounting those future uh, cash flows to create a net present value for the business. So what I put here is that valuation fairness is often more subjective than objective and particularly given the buyers and sellers will have different data they use. So what's key for one is whether you have a buyer or a seller that'll pay, you can think your home is worth 750 million, but unless there's a buyer out there who's gonna buy it, that really doesn't matter. So Solaris is really all about employing all of those ideas that you learned about in these first few days, like BATNA, ZOPA, and resistance point anchoring and trying to think about how to position yourself properly and in a manner that you see as fair and ethical. Okay, now I also had you read The Secrets of Power Negotiating. And just to invoke a few of these uh, rather quickly because you've read the case or the article, you have to think about the degree to which you feel comfortable using these techniques. And gosh, I'll, I'd say I've probably used most of these. Um, these are, by the way, um, tactics that have an American slant to them. So we'll talk about cross-cultural differences a little bit later. But these are classically used things within an American context. So it, it's ask for more than you expect to get. So you start with your opening that you will then back off of through concessions. It's called the maximum plausible position. So the most or least you think you can get without being so egregious that somebody would walk away from you. And as we've talked about in class, people typically expect Americans to be uh, very um, aggressive in their opening stances and then that the idea that they will concede back. Never say yes to the first offer. And that is a very scientifically valid approach because people are usually um, happier if there's some negotiation in it. They'll actually feel happier with less unless that party um, says, here's my first and final. And, you know, you believe them because you believe they will walk away. Play the reluctant buyer or seller. So, ooh, I may or may not want to sell, buy, sell. I'm not sure. That can usually get you concessions. The flinch, the, ooh, I don't know, that's your offer. The vice technique, simply saying, you'll have to do better than that. Um, learn to develop walkaway power is another one. And once again, usually if you have a very strong BATNA, you can walk away. You know, if you were thinking of house hunting, um, but it turns out that you're madly in love with your existing house, it's pretty easy to walk away from deals. And the idea of invoking higher authority. 
Um, so saying, you know, working to build rep uh, rapport with somebody, but then saying, okay, I'm going to have to go check with somebody else who could make the final decision. And you've read about this, that in car sales, people will typically do that. They'll say, oh, I got to go talk to my manager about it. And it's kind of a classic technique. So the key is you have to figure out what you're most and least comfortable with. You may use some of these, you may not, and it really depends on your comfort level with them, but I wanted to at least introduce you to them. Now, um, I'm going to go, I'm going to create a last video for you, but I do want to remind you that your initial goal statements are due next week, and you will have to prepare for one additional um, role play. So be sure to take a peek at those to your initial goal statement overview, which is on my courses for you as a way to prepare. I'm gonna do one more video, video three, which will show you a few details about uh, STAR for consideration.